Hello everybody, welcome to another Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom product review here on Jurassic Collectibles. Again, it's me, Tom, here filling in for Jurassic Collectibles to cover all of these Lego sets for you guys. So, this particular Lego set is set number 75930. It is the Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Estate. It's above 1,000 pieces, so it is the largest set of the line. And we get the Indoraptor Blue, Owen Clare, the mansion building, and a bunch of different pieces with it. Uh, it retails for around 120 to 130 pound, so it's going to put a big dent in your wallet. And here, firstly, you can get a nice look at the box art, so you can see it's very nicely branded. Lots of different details all over the place, like Owen and Blue up in the top corner, the Jurassic World logo, so everything here looks really, really good. And turn into the back of the box, we have a breakdown of some of the different play features included. You can see the Indoraptor and Blue fighting, Owen going against Wheatley, and lots of other different things happening on the rear of the box art here. It looks really, really cool. And we also have some nice artwork along the top of the box, showing the Indoraptor, Blue, Gunner Eversol, Wheatley, um, Eli Mills, Owen Grady, Claire Deering, and Maisie Lockwood. And then the one-to-one -one comparison there on the end of Owen that LEGO tends to do with their sets. Okay, so here you can see the Indoraptor showdown at Lockwood Manor in its entirety, and already it's very easy to see that there's lots going on. It's very, very hard to fit the entire manor into a single shot, so what we're going to do is go in close on each of the floors when we come to it so we can give you an in-depth look at what's on each floor. Before we do that, however, we're going to take a look at the bit which I reckon a lot of you guys are waiting for, which is the minifigures and then the two dinosaurs included, the Indoraptor and also Velociraptor Blue. So without any further ado, we're going to move straight into looking at those minifigures. Okay, so up first we have the Owen Grady minifigure included in the set, and he comes wearing his light blue Henley shirt, his brown utility vest, dark blue legs, and he is also wielding an axe. And if we take a look at him, see that really nice torso and leg printing on him. Looks really, really great. The Lego axe he comes with is a really cool piece. The new head print for Chris Pratt. And also, if I turn his hair around, we get this more confident, smirking face for Owen as well. On the back printing, there is no knife like on the original, which is a bit of a disappointment, but it still looks quite cool. And here he is now compared to that original Owen Grady minifigure. You can see they're very, very similar, but they have distinct differences that make them stand out from one another. I really, really like the new one. The dark blue printing on the legs is a little bit faded, but I think the new utility vest is really, really nicely detailed, and overall it's great to have another figure of Owen in the collection. And moving on from Owen, we have Claire, who comes here wearing an olive green jacket with a lighter green shirt underneath and some brown trousers. If we take a look there, we can see the really detailed torso print on Claire, and also turning it around to the back again, nice detail on the back of Claire. And if we pop her hair around, she has a alternate facial expression seen there. Get that in focus for you guys. Which looks very determined. So Claire's alternate facial expression is super determined, which is cool. She's another cool minifigure. And it is great to be adding a, another version of Claire Deering to the Lego collection. And here we can see Claire compared to her Jurassic World counterpart. And this time around, Claire is looking a lot more Sarah Harding-esque. She looks really, really cool here. I really like the costume design for her character going into Fallen Kingdom. And I think LEGO have done a really, really nice capturing her look from what we've seen so far. And moving on to the next two characters in the set, we have Ken Wheatley and also Eli Mills. Eli Mills, first of all, here, comes with a really nice torso print. The suit you can see there. Some nice printing on the back, and a walkie-talkie. He is really nice. Um, the only downside with him, and if I take his hair off, it will make this more obvious. 
he uses the Lex Luthor head from Lego. So this is a generic head they use for a lot of generic characters. So it's a shame that um, Rafe Spells, who plays Eli, doesn't get his own printing here. We also then have Ken Wheatley, who we can see in his safari shirt with the bandolier across it. Looks really, really nice. Really nice attention to detail on the shirt piece there, actually. And on the back, he has what looks like a... If we can just get that in focus for you. Bear with me one second. He has what appears to be a safari case, which looks really, really cool. So that there. It's Ken Wheatley. Really great looking, unique face mould for him. Looks really, really good. And really nice tranquilizer gun as well. Okay, and then we have the last two characters of the set. Uh, Toby Jones, who plays Gunner Eversole. And then also Maisie Lockwood. So if we take a look at Gunner first, we can see this really nice torso printing that actually has a checkered pattern to it. A red tie, really nice face sculpt, actually looks quite a bit like Toby Jones, which is nice. And then taking his head off the back, we can see his alternate facial expression, a very cocky one. And also the back of what presumably would be uh, either a suit or a waistcoat which looks really, really cool. He also comes with a paddle because he is an auctioneer in the film. So it's cool to see that accessory included with him if we put him back together. And um, a fun fact for you as well, this is, I believe, the hair that was used for Lord Business from the Lego movie. And as far as I'm aware, this is the first time it's been reused since then. So Maisie comes with this really nice looking uh, baby raptor. As you can see there, looks absolutely phenomenal. Really, really like the baby raptor included in this set. We're going to plop him down there. And then Maisie herself has got a worried looking facial expression. Really, really nice torso print. Plain blue legs. And then if we pop her hair off, on the back of her torso she has got a hood print and also a smiling face which is really really cool. And we don't actually know much about Maisie's character at the moment so I'm really really interested to see how she factors into the story of Fallen Kingdom. Okay so we do also get everyone's favourite Velociraptor blue in this set and as we can see she has lots of nice detail including the sickle claw down here. She has the blue striping which follows all throughout her body and a really really nice looking eye here actually which I'm going to try and get you guys a close up of. Um, the printing on her eye is phenomenal. The only slight downside here is the coloration here I believe may have been meant to match up to the body but is a little bit off. It doesn't quite capture up to the lime green that's used for the rest of blue hair, so this here does look a little bit off. Um, blue, like with all the other Lego Raptors, if I get it open for you, has a beautiful set of teeth, as you can see there. And her sitting down is also showcasing her articulation, where you can rotate the legs and also the arms. And the arms at the front are able to hold onto any Lego bar piece. So if we use a syringe as an example, and if I grab blue for a second, you will see that the figure is able to hold onto that syringe. So that can actually make for some, pushing her back into centre frame, that can make for some really cool displays. If you get some bar pieces that are on a building, you can actually pose the velociraptors so they look like they're jumping, which is really, really cool. So blue is a nice addition here. I'm not as big a fan of this one as I am the original Jurassic World version of blue, but it's still nice to have her included in the set. Now, moving on to the thing that I think everyone has been waiting for, the Indoraptor. This is the first bipedal medium-sized Lego uh, dinosaur that's been produced. So this body piece here and the tail piece is brand new. Um, the head sculpt is also brand new, and the legs, and as far as I can tell, the arms as well. I believe the hands may be reused from the original Indominus Rex, which I will compare it to in a moment. But overall... Um, most of the moulding here is new and it looks really nice. One thing to note here is you can see the striping going along the bodywork. Perhaps this is to suggest that this creature is as intelligent as Blue, um, which would be quite cool because it is literally her counterpart. But yeah, overall the dinosaur looks really, really nice. In terms of articulation, the legs here 
are on similar joints to the dinosaurs last time around, but these are not ratcheted, so they do not make that noise. Um, the arms are free moving. The wrists, I'm not quite sure how well this is coming out, but they are also free moving. And the head, the jaw can open and close, and you're also able to bend it down. Bend it all the way up actually, which lets you make some really cool poses where you can have the Indoraptor pose like so. And the ball joint here also allows you to turn the head at different angles as well. So the Indoraptor looks really, really nice. I'm really a big fan of this one. And if we just zoom in on the head for a second, you can see the head sculpt here is really, really nice as well. It looks really, really good, I think. Um, the eye detail is nice, the red is very, very sinister, and it looks great. I think it definitely looks better with the jaw open, like so, but it still looks really, really nice regardless. And as we progress along the body, if I focus on the paintwork there, you can see we even have some nice scaling details here, which look really, really good. And that stripe, like I said, does follow the Indoraptor all the way down its tail there as you can see another thing to note and i don't know how well this will come out is there is actually some detail there this is not deliberate this is a kind of joint that occurs on all lego dinosaurs where these four points indicate where the joint that clicks the leg together has been pushed in so that is a look at lego's take on the indoraptor I think it looks really, really nice. I'm really happy with how this one has come out, actually. I'm a lot happier with it in person than I thought I was going to be. Uh, I just feel as though it is a little bit large, and you'll see that later on when we take a look at the manor. Um, the scale that the manor building has been done with does make it impossible to play with the Indoraptor on the inside, unfortunately. But, as I say, that's all stuff which we'll get into in due course. Okay, and here you can see the manor building in pretty much its entirety. It's a very large structure, so it is hard to fit it all in. A few nice details to note. We have the balcony, which is really, really cool looking. We have the nice double doors. We have some really, really nice stone texturing. And we also have the really, really nice glass windows. And all the windows you see can be pushed out easily. So that play feature is built in across the model, which is really, really nice. Um, we have a lot of really, really cool aesthetical details here, which really help complement the overall look of the manor. And they make it feel very royal, very regal, and very authentic. Um, we're going to go in and take a closer look now at each of the floors on the exterior and see kind of what we think of them. Okay, so here we have the top floor. You can see we have the very, very nice balcony area here, which is really well done. The door just pushes open to allow access to the interior. And then when you reach around the side, you can just push it shut again. So that looks really, really nice. We have the really, really nice red roofing here, which looks fantastic. Smokestacks. We have the glass uh, skylight, which we'll take a look at in a second. And we also have a nice feature here, where we simply pull on this piece to drop down the glass light, which is really, really cool. So we'll take a look at that from higher up in a second. But as you can see, we have got lots of nice aesthetical details. These little pieces here, the piping along the side just here, it all looks really, really nice and makes the building feel very regal and very authentic to what it's trying to represent. Moving down to the middle floor of the mansion, you can see we have some of the nice brickwork here. We also have the piping which continues down, windows on either side, and just some really nice detail with this window here in the middle that you can actually fit your finger through. Um, which is just interesting that that window's hollow, as you can see, so you can reach through there if you want to. Um, we also have a very nice use of a shield piece up here, which looks fantastic. And overall, I just think that the second floor here on the manor is really, really nice looking. And then moving down to the bottom floor of the manor, pretty much the same design as the other two floors. Same kind of aesthetical choice with the windows and also these sculptural pieces here. The only difference here being, of course, the opening doors, which are able to open as so. 
And here taking a look at the back of the manor, we can see lots of different rooms and different details in each area. So we're going to jump in and take a look at some of the details now that are on the interior of this building. Okay, so a better look at that skylight play feature now. And you can see we have Owen standing on top of the skylight. I grab over here, pull it, and Owen goes flying. Moving down onto the interior of the top floor, we have the room here, which has a small treasure map displayed here, a lamp, and also a little Lego, if I can pull it out, umbrella that you can see there which just slots into that holdall. So that is that compartment on the top floor. Then moving along to the middle here, we have that door which opened from the outside, like so, revealing the balcony. And actually you can see it, there's very little space to fit a minifigure on the balcony. If I show you Jurassic World Claire going out there, you can see there are literally just two studs. So it is very, very hard to fit a figure out there. And now we come to Lucy's bedroom. If I just pull the focus a little bit. There we go. And you can see we have this nice little bed here for Lucy. I'm just going to take Claire out of the shop. We have this nice little bed here for Lucy. And this actually has a really nice play feature to it. Where the bed is connected to the wall. You can see there it's not connected at all. So it lifts up. We can take Lucy... We can slot her in under there, like so, and we can then lower the bed, presumably to recreate the sequence with the Indoraptor from the Fallen Kingdom trailer that we got. Unfortunately, however, as I just struggle to get Lucy out, you can see it is a bit fiddly. Um, unfortunately, however, as you can see from the scale of the interior, if I pull that focus there for you, it is much more capable of holding a Velociraptor than the Indoraptor. And even then, a character like Blue is really, really going to struggle to fit inside the interior of this building. And that is one problem with the set as, as a whole. The entire interior is very, very compact. It is really hard to fit many figures in. You can see Owen there fits in fine, but fitting many characters in, you would struggle to fit a handful of characters on each level. And it actually gets tighter as we head down. So we'll take a look at the second floor now, which features the laboratory. Okay, so on the second floor now, we have this laboratory area. We can see a really nice build for a... Um, microscope which looks really good this here is obviously meant to represent a science tray with some kind of stuff in it we have a really nice computer screen here with the indoraptor displayed just there that looks fantastic we then have uh moving further down and just focusing slightly for you we have this section in the middle here which is um actually if i twist it upwards a little bit you'll be able to see it a bit better and if we pull the focus onto that, doesn't really want to focus on it, but inside there, there is a little dinosaur claw. So we can presume that perhaps the computer over here is pulling DNA from the claw to do something with it. That's quite cool. We also, inside this crate here, if I pull it out and open it for you, we have a little, oh, sending it flying everywhere, a little dinosaur egg that you can see just there which is very nice okay so that is what is in that section of the lab and i have just sent the egg flying onto the floor so i'll have to pick that up after we're done here it is as you can see very very fiddly to get human hands in here and then at the end here we have a nice computer console that actually has if i can pop it out two separate We'll just pull the focus on that for you. Two separate um, jewels on it, which is really cool. And then, again, you can see how compact it is just by how much I'm struggling to kind of fit that back in there. There you go, that's about good. Uh, maybe not. We'll fix that after. And then lastly, if we refocus on it, we have a little area here where you can take the baby Velociraptor and actually place it inside for incubation, which is really, really cool. So 
So that is the lab area of this floor. We also on either side have got these little spaces with nothing really to them. There is one here and also pulling the camera further down we have another one down here. And you can see how that feature worked from the inside of just pushing the window out like so. Very nice and simple, it's an easy feature to do. And then we take the window back and simply slot it in like so. And these buffers are built into the structure of everywhere so the window doesn't go any further in. It sits exactly where it needs to, which is really nicely done. Uh, we also have got Owen here. So you can see Owen again for scale. You can actually fit more character in these off sections than you can the laboratory here, just because the lab here where they've spaced the computer consoles in, there isn't much space. And that is a disappointment, to be honest, with the whole building. The whole building is very compact, so it's very hard to fit many figures inside it, which means you can't really do much with it. And as a child, I think you would struggle to play with this a lot. And one other thing to mention on the second floor, we do have these walkways on either side which connect to the museum displays that are situated on the first floor. And these, again, actually offer quite a bit of space, so you could position quite a few different characters on these if you wanted to, which is nice. Then lastly, on the bottom floor, we have this nice piece of square area here which is fenced in on either side. We have these opening doors. They're a lot harder to open from the inside, actually. It's kind of impossible. Oh, I think I've got it. So you can see how the doors open up there. We have plant pots in either side, so there's some over here. And then in the outlying wings of the building, if we zoom it in a little bit for you guys, we have these little pieces of crockery in either side as well. And then again, these windows behind them can be pushed out, which is a very nice feature. Um, it is just a shame it is very repetitive and it is the same play feature everywhere on the set. Something else to notice as well, if we pull out this piece here, you will see, I believe, a Dimetrodon, which is really, really nice to see. So the museum displays do actually have really nice stickers printed on them. We have the Dimetrodon here. And then if I pull out the other display for you guys, we have got what appears to be a Velociraptor with a silhouette of a T-Rex and some Gallimimus in the background, which is again really, really cool. So the museum displays included here are really, really nice pieces. They have really nice stickers to them, and they just help to set the atmosphere for the lower floor a lot, because beyond them there isn't really too much to the lower floor as such. So there you go, another look at the Dimetrodon. And you can see as well, if I pull the camera around for you quickly, the way this system works is a pin-based system. So you can remove, this one's probably gonna focus better, remove the pins here. They go into the pinholes, which if we focus on them are back here. And that actually allows quite a bit of modular play. So I could remove these sections if I wanted to, pull off this far section here, and then connect that to the inside followed by perhaps that section there, just to change up the way the display is. So you can see, just through that modular pin system, you are actually able to change up the appearance of Lockwood Manor quite nicely, which is interesting. Um, and it is definitely something that I think a lot of people will play with, and I think a lot of people will look at ways to add extensions to this set, which will be really, really interesting to see. Okay guys, so to round out the review, there are some smaller elements included. We get this nice Ceratopsian skull, which you can see here, which can be displayed inside. And if you bear with me one second, we're going to find the Triceratops to compare it to. And then lastly, we do also get Owen's bike included in this set, which is the same bike we saw in the Raptor Rampage set. Wheels spin nicely, and you can, of course sit Owen Grady on the bike like so, get him to hold the handlebars and go riding with the Raptor Squad, which is very cool. Okay guys, so that has been your look at the LEGO Indoraptor Rampage at Lockwood Manor set. 
What do you think? Are you going to be picking this set up on its release? Do you think it's too overpriced? Does the fact that the interior doesn't have much space put you off? Whatever you think, make sure to leave it in the comments below for us to see, guys. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Stay tuned for more LEGO reviews coming up, and stay tuned to more videos from myself, Corey, and also David as we cover more of the content that is coming out this April for all Lush Jurassic fans. Stay awesome, guys, and have a good week.